Welcome to Samsung Games, the place to find new strategy games and welcome to my guide on supply in Unity of Command 2. So first up, what is supply good for? Well, supply helps you resupply your units. What does that mean in practice? Essentially, it means that it will make your suppressed steps active. Now, how many suppressed steps get active is dependent on the experience of your unit. So if you have green units, one suppressed step will become active. If you have regular units, two. If you have a veteran or elite units, it's three. So now that you know what supplies is good for, let me show you how you can see what is and isn't supplies. So if you click V on the keyboard, you can see the supply for your areas. If you click B on the keyboard, you can see supply for the enemy. There is no fog of war when you come to supply. You can see everything, even if it's like super far away, it doesn't matter. Okay, so how you can see what is and isn't supplied, let me show it to you on the enemy screen because it's a bit easier. Everywhere you, where you have the picture of these barrels, it means that it is completely supplied. Everywhere else you see this little, let's say, line, and it's divided into red and white. Essentially, the amount of white tells you the percentage of how likely it is to get supplies. So for example, here this is almost filled up, so this would be like 90% chance of being supplied, 10% chance of being unsupplied. This would be like 75%. This is 100%. Okay? Now, these little white squares with the red in the middle, this means that it is unsupplied. The way the supplies work is that there's something called a supply store and a supply hub. So this is a supply hub. You can see these blue ones for the end. Now you might notice that I have no supply. There's some purpose. It's because I want to show it to you. So like I said, there's supplies up and supply source. What is a supply source? Well, there are four supply sources in the game. Rail, port, truck, and ship. You can see them if you click on supply hub and you can see this little thing, this, these little symbols here. So here you can see a port. Now, rail and port um, are both connected to railways, which means that they will spread through the railway. That's why, for example, you can see that here, it is also has the symbol as if there was a supply hub or something helping, because both ports and railways supplies, they move to railways unrestricted, assuming that you own the area for the area. So, for example, this one does not connect through here, because I do not own this particular square. If I did, it would have moved through. This moves straight through over here. Now let me show you the enemy so you can see it a little bit easier here. For example, you can see that he has a port here and this port is moving through this railway completely unobstructed up to down here because there's nobody standing in the way. If I move to my unit, for example, here, then this and he would still own these hexes, it would no longer be supplied here, just like we can see with this little example. Okay, even though I own this place because I don't own this one, this does not keep going. Okay, so that's why the zone the zone that you own is very important because it only moves through the zone that you own. But so this is port and rail. Aside from that, you also have trucks and ships. Those do not connect to the ra railway. So for example, even though I own I have this little, let me show you too. This is a ship support if you click on it it will show you what you can own and it doesn't spread through of it so it has essentially like one square length if i own this place and this place it will supply that as well but that's it and you can already see there's some and the chances of this being supplied is not the best so the ships aren't like the best thing in the world okay so you can see it over here and then you also have trucks which is essentially the supply hubs that you can see over here i could place a new supply hub somewhere now, I said that the supply moves to rail unrestricted. However, if they're broken bridges, that it doesn't work. So you can see that this is going unrestricted very nicely. Here it's broken and we've got nothing here because this is a destroyed bridge. Same in this direction. Great. Not moving through. Here, not moving through. So what you gotta do is you gotta repair the bridges. And then on the next turn, the supply is going to move through. It's going to show you that it can be handled. So this is important. So you already get supplied by supply sources, even if you don't have any supply. So it's not that if you don't have any supplies, you will never get supplied. It's just not going to be the best. As you can see here, yes, I have a chance of getting supplied here pretty well. This is fully supplied and this is a chance again, this as well. Okay. Now, how can you improve that? Well, that's where you place the supply hub. So you click on this little button over here to create a new hub. Alternatively, if you already have a hub, you can click on this first thing to increase the amount of tracks that is in a supply hub. So I can place a supply hub somewhere here. Now, where can you place a supply hub? You can place supply hubs within five 
movement points from any railway, supplied railway hex. So for example, here we can see this kind of an area. This is important that it's a movement point and not uh, like hexes or anything. So if you have some really like rough terrain and things like that, you might not be able to place that far off from your other places than if it was like a really nice terrain. You can place, for example, a supply hub over here. Now you can immediately see what kind of supply does it have. The higher the number, the better. And with one track, up to five movement points away, you can supply. If you're adding tracks, it's going to increase. So for two tracks, it's going to be eight, three, ten, four, eleven, to five, twelve. What's important here is that, again, this is a movement point. If it's a rough terrain, you might not get easily this. Now, what's important here is that this supply, in order to supply all the units around it, it has to be in supply, meaning that it has to be connected to that railway or something. So if the enemy has placed a unit in, in into this hex, this is now going to be unsupplied and it's going to stop supplying all around it. It can also get overrun if an enemy steps onto this hex, and that, that means that you'll get those tracks back, the one that you have used, but there will be a two-turn delay before you can use them again. So they'll be over here in this little thingy. Movement is like immediately available next turn, the turn after that, the turn after that. Okay, so you can immediately see it here. We have one track available for next turn. And uh, so there will be like a delay. So that's why you don't want to let the enemy step onto it. Also, if you step on an enemy supply or an enemy steps into yours, all units in the surrounding area and on the area will immediately get resupplied. Which uh, in practice means that a suppressed step can become active. That's why if you're going to be stepping on an enemy supply hub like here, you want to make sure that you're using units that are ideally have something suppressed because they can sort of activate that. Now, next up, we need to talk about supply disruption. So I've already talked to you about what these little lines mean, how the, the white is essentially a percentage that tells you the chance of being supplied or unsupplied in this unit. So let's check out, for example, this unit I have over here. This is a veteran unit. And it has a little over, let's say, 60% chance of being supplied. Now, that's not the only thing that affects the units. When the units, on the start of next turn, the unit will determine whether it's going to be supplied or not and it's going to do a roll. Now you have this is sort of like a basic information and then on top of that there's thing, other things that affect it like weather, the type of a unit. So for example elite units get a little bit higher chance to get supplied. Also units that have already been out of supply. So for example this is out of supply for one turn so next turn this yellow thing is going to be a little bit bigger because it has like a better chance to get so you can imagine that like you know they're like out of food so they're really trying to find food or something like that in real life so they have slightly better chance of get supplied now why do these numbers are different elsewhere that's depending on the terrain so the terrain is calculated into this but the terrain you can already see so you can see that in this mountain this is uh, has a lot of red this is a better terrain or something so it has better stuff but the sort of Type of a unit and weather is depending on the turn itself. Also, pantoon bridges, stragglers affected, etc. Now, my favorite thing about supply is what happens if you or the enemy are out of supply. So, out of supply for one turn, as you can see, a great example right here. The only thing it means that you will not recover any previously suppressed steps. Not a big deal. Fine. Out of supply two turns, not only will you not recover any previously suppressed step, but you'll have no action point and some of your steps will be suppressed. How many, as usual, depends on the level of your unit. So if you have a green unit, three of your steps will be suppressed. If you have a regular, two. If you have veteran or elite, like I have here, one will be suppressed. Three turns out of supply, no action points, meaning you cannot hit the enemy, the enemy can kill you. One less movement points than normal. All steps will be suppressed and you can't handle terrain when moving. Four turns out of supplies, all the same effect as three turns out of supplies, but three steps get converted into stragglers. So essentially, if you manage to out of supply the enemy for long enough, he's going to completely fall apart. And that's a big, big part of the game is making sure that your units are supplied and the enemy is not. I think that's everything you need to know around about supply. If you'd like to know more, let me know in the comments and let me know what other guides you'd like to see about Unity of Command 2. You can click on the right top to watch my All Objectives Complete guide 
or you can click on the right bottom to watch my previous guide on Unity of Command Stragglers. I'll see you there. Bye bye.